Hello and welcome to another Critical Hit Battle Report. In this video we'll be playing Star Wars Legion, which, if you haven't played it, is probably the most balanced rule set for a sci-fi game in existence at the moment. If you haven't played it, I'll be making a how-to-play video in the not-too-distant future, but for this game I'll explain what's going on as we progress through it, so it might come across a little bit longer than it would do otherwise. This game will be fought at 500 points, which is roughly two-thirds of a full-sized 800-point game. Now let's take a look at the armies. First up it's my 212th Attack Battalion Phase 1 clones led by a clone commander, which probably would be Cody, and Anakin Skywalker. Doing most of the work will be three units of clones. For those of you unfamiliar with the game, each unit's stats are written down on cards which shows what upgrades and extra personnel they can take, in addition to information about the unit itself. In this case, Phase 1 clones are 4 people in each unit with 1 health, a courage value of 1, a movement value of 2, and they roll a red defence die when they take hits. They carry DC-15A blaster rifles that roll a black die to see if they hit or miss. One unit has an extra clone, and two units have an extra clone carrying a DC-15, a potent squad support weapon that rolls two red dice to attack, and allows a surge result to be converted into a critical hit thanks to critical 1. The clones themselves have a special rule called fire support which means an eligible unit at range 1 of a clone unit shooting a target can add their guns to the dice pool and provide a withering hail of fire on the enemy. It's very effective. Next up we have the generic clone commander who has 4 health and a courage value of 2 which can be used by all units at range 1 to 3. He can select a clone unit to receive an order token in the command phase thanks to direct and he can spend an action to give a surge token to up to 2 nearby friendly units. Each die in the game has a surge icon on it on at least one of its sides and surge tokens can be spent to convert them into hits or critical hits depending on your model's rules. Some models have the ability to do this naturally thanks to an ability on their card hard. The clone commander himself isn't particularly effective but he's great for improving units around him, as any commander should be. He has the strict orders command card allowing friendly troopers to remove suppression tokens without rolling dice when they activate. He is carrying some electro binoculars which allows him to perform an action called spotter which gives a friendly unit at range 1 an aim token that could be spent to re-roll failed hits when shooting. Next up we've got Anakin Skywalker, and this will be the first time that I've used him. He has 6 health, 3 courage, a move of 2, and a lightsaber that hits pretty hard with 5 red attack dice, and if you don't know about the dice, the red ones are the best. His attacks are effective against armour thanks to impacts 3, and he ignores 3 of an opponent's defence rolls thanks to pierce 3. He has an ability called Jump 1 which allows him to jump up onto or over obstacles at height 1 or lower without having to climb or clamber which is really useful. He uses the Gemso fighting style which means that if he spends a dodge token when defending the attacker is inflicted with a wound for each successful block he makes which is really really punchy. He's immune to pierce so can't have his defence rolls cancelled himself and thanks to tempted he can take both light side and dark side force powers. Lastly he has flawed which means my opponent Xander will gain a card he can play that makes Anakin less effective for a turn as he sits there whinging about Padme or whatever else he's doing. In Star Wars Legion you have a command deck of 7 cards. Each of these cards has a number of pips or white dots in the top left corner and at the beginning of the turn each player picks a card and plays them at the same time. Whoever's card has the lowest number of pips goes first and if it's a draw you roll a red die and that will determine the outcome instead. Simple enough. Each 7 card deck has 2 1 pip cards, 2 2 pip cards, 2 3 pip cards and a single 4 pip card. Also written on the cards is the number of units that receive an order token, with all your other tokens being put face down in a pile. When picking a unit to activate, you can either select a unit that already has a token next to it, or you can select one randomly from your stash, with a disadvantage that you don't know what you're going to get, so you could get a unit that you don't need at that particular moment in time. Additionally, characters such as Anakin and Obi-Wan have cards that provide effects for the duration of the turn, making them particularly powerful. Once each card is used, it's discarded at the end of the turn, with the exception of standing orders which is returned to your hand. Now as such, you have to use them extremely wisely. 
For my one pip cards I have Ambush, a generic one unit activating card, and this is where the fun begins, which makes Anakin better at dodging, and also allows him to make a free attack action after moving thanks to Relentless. He also gains the effect of this card for the whole game, which is unique to Anakin. In addition, there's criteria he must meet or he gains a suppression token at the end of the turn, and if he ends the turn with any tokens, Xander can play Anakin's floor card and make him less effective for a turn. For my two pip cards, I have Air Support, which allows Anakin or Obi-Wan to call in an airstrike on a unit for free at the end of their activation. My other card is You Underestimate My Power, which gives Anakin a natural surge equals crit, and Master of the Force, which allows him to ready a spent force power. My three pip cards are Attack of the Clones, which allows me to order three clone trooper units and gain a surge token or remove a suppression token for each unit. The other is Anakin specific, Hero of the Clone Wars. This gives Anakin two surge tokens per turn and allows anyone within range 1-2 to two to use them thanks to Exemplar. The last card is a generic standing orders card of 4 pips which is pretty crap but it's in there anyway. And the card on the right is the floor card that we mentioned before. If Xander can suppress Anakin enough he'll be able to use this card at a crucial moment which could cost me dearly. On the Separatist side we have two units of B1 battle droids, one with a security droid and one with an E5C blaster. In addition there's a dwarf spider droid and then a unit of the highly effective Magna Guard and Count Dooku himself. The B1 battle droids are particularly effective with their single white die per model for attacks, and if they're not issued an order at the beginning of the turn, they are subject to a rule called AI attack, which means they have to spend their first action attacking before they can do anything else. Thankfully they can circumvent both these issues by supplementing themselves with extra weapons, such as an E5C which adds 3 black dice to the attack pool. The security droid edition can be used to ignore AI if needed for a turn, and in addition, droid units can use Coordinate Droid Trooper, which allows droid units to daisy chain orders to other units, meaning for that most of the game, most units will have a face-up token. This is a major advantage of playing the Separatist Alliance. Count Dooku has been taken with two force powers, in this case the same as Anakin's with force push and force reflexes. On his card he has cunning, which means if a Count Dooku specific command card is played at the beginning of the turn that has an equal number of pips to the card I play, then Count Dooku wins. He has deflect, which means that surges for defence against range attacks inflict a wound on the firing model. He has the Makashi fighting style, which allows Dooku to reduce his pierce value on his lightsaber by one to remove an opponent's immunity to pierce. He also has a ranged attack on Dooku's lightning, which has five black dice and moves an enemy unit when hit. He can ready two force powers per turn, which means he can use both his powers every single turn. Next up it's a Magna Guard. They have AI Dodge Move, which means if they do not receive an order, their first action must be one of those two actions. They have Charge, which allows them to attack after moving, and Guardian 2, which allows them to take hits for Dooku. They're immune to Pierce in melee, and they can ignore the effects of difficult terrain thanks to Unhindered. They have a card called Protector to improve their Guardian ability, and an Electro Whip Magna Guard that immobilizes anything it hits. Lastly, the Dwarf Spider Droid, which has a nose-mounted laser cannon for some potent ranged firepower. In addition, it has engagement protocols to give it AI attack move. On its card, it has self-destruct, which means it will blow itself up after taking four wounds and damage everything around it, which in previous games has been really funny. Armor 3 cancels three regular hits, making it harder to kill, and it can climb effectively. It has Surge equals Hit and Defensive Surge equals Block, meaning it's a little bit more survivable and a little bit better at hitting. Next up we went through the process of selecting the Objective, Deployment and Conditions cards and ended up with the Intercept the Transmissions as the Mission, Limited Visibility as the Conditions and Advanced Positions as the Deployment Type. Advanced Positions gave us two L-shaped deployment areas around the edge of the board, and all troops gain Scout 1, meaning they can move after deploying. Limited Visibility means that the range at which our armies can shoot is reduced to range 2 for the first turn, 3 for the second, and then full range for the remainder of the game. The mission of Intercept the Transmissions requires us to put three tokens across the centre of the board, one in the centre, and two others halfway between the centre and the edge of the board. 
At the end of rounds two and four, you gain two victory points for each point held. Here's the battlefield, here's the objectives across the middle, the western one there, the centre one right in the middle of this little village we've got, and then the eastern one close to the Republic deployment zone. A larger unit of B-1 droids, Count Dooku, the Magna Guard and a dwarf spider droid have deployed at the northern tip of the Separatist deployment zone, and a second unit of B-1s has deployed to capture the western objective. The Republic forces have deployed en masse in a gun line to advance steadily across the table. All units made their scout moves and moved steadily towards their own objectives. Next we chose our first command cards for the turn, I chose this is where the fun begins to start building up Anakin's buffs, and Xander chose Roger Roger to choose three droid troopers to issue an order to, and give them either a dodge or a surge token. Anakin activated first selecting move and dodge and force reflexes as his free force ability. Sander decided to randomly select a token which could only have been one of two, either the Dwarf Spider Droid or Count Dooku. In this case he got the Dwarf Spider Droid which decided to move up and then found itself in range two of the clone troopers taking cover. It rolled, scored two hits but they're immediately cancelled by cover. Next it was my turn to select a token and I turned one over and got a clone trooper unit which is the most likely thing it was going to be. I picked the unit that was in cover and in range of the Magna Guard and fired their blaster rifles at them. Unfortunately after cancelling some of the hits due to cover, that left a single defence dice which was rolled successfully and none of the Magna Guard were hurt. Next Xander turned over his last token which was Count Dooku and he decided to move him up and capitalise on a mistake I'd made, which meant that Anakin was actually in range of his force pull, which is the next thing that he decided to do, pulling him out of cover and into the line of fire of the entire Separatist force. Count Dooku's subsequent force lightning on Anakin scored one wound and meant that Anakin was already injured before the game had really started. More crucially, he had taken a suppression token. Next up I turned over a token and I got the Clone Commander. What I didn't do at the beginning of the game was use Direct in the command phase to issue an order to a Clone Trooper unit, so I did that just then and used the other Clone Trooper unit. I gave him an aim and I decided to shoot and using fire support put all of the shots into Count Dooku. After resolving the mediocre shooting, it turned out that all Dooku received was one wound and a suppression token. Next up it was the B1 battle droids who all moved into range of Anakin and decided to fire, scoring some abysmal results of only two hits with the E5C. Rolling two red defence die for Anakin meant he was still alive, but he was doubly suppressed, which was bad news for my following turn. Next, the clone unit hiding behind the wall decided to fire at the dwarf spider droid with two shots from a DC-15 and four from the DC-15A blasters. Thanks to critical one, one of the surges got turned into a crit, but unfortunately due to armour three, three of the hits were lost and only two went through. Two failed white defence rolls, however, resulted in two damage on the dwarf spider droid. Next up the B1 battle droids decided to move up to the cover and climb up it which unfortunately resulted in two dead battle droids. Next up the Magna Guard decided to activate and already equipped with an aim token meant they could use charge to move move and get into combat with Anakin. After getting into base contact with their double move, Charge gives them a free attack action after moving, and so they decided to hit Anakin with everything they've got. 
due to some potent rolling, a whopping six wounds went through and it was up to Anakin's defence dice to save the day, unfortunately failing three of them in total and putting him up to four wounds. At the beginning of the turn we selected new cards and I selected Attack of the Clones given that I knew Xander was going to be playing Anakin's Floor card this turn. Count Dooku chose Fear, Surprise, Intimidation making him much more effective for the turn and of course he activated first. Thanks to the relentless rule from the card he had just played, Dooku could move and then gain a free attack action and he used it to try and lightning my clones behind the wall but only scored one hit which failed due to cover. He then used force push and pulled my clones out from cover and decided to try and chop him up with his lightsaber. Being a potent fighter and thanks to using Arsenal 2 mini, he could use his lightsaber and his lightning, he killed all of the clone unit. Next up it was Anakin to fight the Magna Guard, doing quite a lot of damage to them. Three in total were killed by Anakin's lightsaber, leaving only one left to fight. Next up the remaining single Magna Guard decided to try and attack Anakin. After defence dice were rolled, Anakin managed to inflict a wound back on the Magna Guard thanks to Gem So Mastery. Next up it was my turn and I selected my clone commander to fire using fire support from a nearby squad of clones which meant that all of them could fire into one unit and of course I chose Dooku. The Magna Guard even though he was in melee managed to use Guardian and get rid of some of the hits but that still left six to go through onto Dooku. Of course he spent a dodge token which managed to get rid of one of them but the rest would be on his saves alone. After rolling it turned out Dooku took two wounds but thanks to deflect managed to kill one of my clones in the process. Next up Xander decided to randomly select a token and received a token for a droid unit who all immediately decided to fire at the now exposed Anakin. Despite being shot at by 500 droids at point blank range, Anakin only took one wound. Next up a unit of B1 droids up on the cover decided to shuffle over slightly so they could see something to shoot at, in this case Anakin. Now it's time for Anakin with one wound left to try and survive. He gets rid of one of the hits due to have being suppressed and gaining some cover, but he then fails a save and the B1 droids kill the Jedi. Obviously thanks to Anakin's substantial plot armour, he's just been wounded and run away, of course. Now it's time for something else to activate as I'd run out of things to choose, and it was the dwarf spider droid that decided to move forward and get rid of the cover for the clones up the back. His nose mounted laser cannon fired and managed to get some damage to go through and after rolling some terrible saves two clones were killed. At the end of turn 2 it was time to score and I scored 2 points for holding the eastern objective and Xander scored 4 points for holding the centre and the west. Entering round 3 we chose our cards, Xander chose You Disappoint Me, a 3 pip Count Dooku and 2 unit card that makes Dooku extra specially potent with his lightning so he can move stuff around with it. I chose Ambush which was 1 pip to try and get the advantage and try and shoot Dooku to death before he could cause me too many problems. I issued my order to my clone commander who then used Direct to issue an order to the unit next to him. I decided to activate my clone commander first and move him forward to the edge of cover so that Dooku wouldn't get any and I then used fire support with the clone unit to fire a load of shots at him. This was a tense moment as if Dooku survived he would kill all of my clones no doubt but thankfully I did enough damage to him to kill him making those clones the MVP of the game. Next up Xander selected his dwarf spider droid who fired all of its ordnance into the two clones and immediately vaporised them. Next up the somewhat fragile B1 battle droids retreated behind cover with their dodge token and then decided to fire at the clones scoring three crits and a hit 
which could be potentially lethal, and turned out to be just that as three clones were killed by the battle droid flyer. At the beginning of turn 4 we selected new cards, Zanda chose push to select two units and I chose air support which would allow my field commander unit, in this case the clone commander, to call in an airstrike after his activation had ended to try and take out some of those droids at the other side of the board. Xander selected the clone commander as the target of all of his blaster fire from his droid unit and scored a fair number of hits. After resolving cover in my defence dice, it ended up with the Clone Commander taking a wound and a suppression token. The Clone Commander stepped back to get at range 4 of the battle droids at the back of the map and then decided to fire with fire support at the dwarf spider droid. Unfortunately, thanks to armour 3, it did largely nothing. At the end of his activation, the Clone Commander called in an airstrike and decided to beam to the two clone units, scoring a decent number of hits. After removing cover and then rolling the defence dice, three battle droids were killed in total across the two units. The droids up on the ledge immediately returned fire at my clone unit and scored two critical hits, meaning cover was going to be completely ineffective. Rolling my defence dice, one of the clones died, leaving one clone in the unit and a suppression token. The dwarf spider droid decided to move round the corner and unleash a hail of fire at the clone commander to see if he could kill him once and for all. Given the number of hits and crits scored, it was really easy for the clone commander to die here, so it depended totally on my rolls, but thankfully the dice gods were on my side and I rolled three saves, so he took another suppression token and a wound. At the end of turn four, Xander hold another two objectives and I only held the one, meaning the end score was eight points to four. And at the end of the game, it was a resounding Separatist Alliance victory. I think things I did wrong in this game was definitely moving Anakin to an area where he could be forced, pulled into combat. I shouldn't have done that. I didn't measure it properly, which meant I didn't get to use Anakin to his full potential. He got one card used on him, and that was it. So that was probably the biggest thing that let me down there. Um, otherwise, the clones performed well, as they always do. They're kind of like the Space Marines of Star Wars Legion. They're not terrible, but they're not great either. They're just solid, and that clone commander is hugely, hugely effective. So if you don't run one in your army, I really suggest you do, because they are mega. Hopefully you've liked it, you've enjoyed it. I've kept it short and sweet without too much faff and without too much rolls and all that sort of stuff, just so you can watch it, get the gist of the game, move on to the next one. If you've liked it, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know what we did wrong in the comments below, and we'll rectify it for next time. Thanks for watching.